In just a few months' time, Wordle took over the internet by storm. If you're like me, your first introduction of this game was probably the grids that you saw on social media. Your friends posted about it. Jimmy Fallon posted about it. Even your mom posted about it. Normally they came in as five by six rows of emoji squares in green, yellow, and gray, and they had different patterns of color. In November of last year, the game had only 90 players, but so far this month, it has attracted millions of players around the globe, and the number is still growing every day. Wordle's overnight success wasn't without reason. In this video, we're going to explore the amusing psychology of Wordle and how it went viral in such an instant. Josh Wardle is a software engineer from Brooklyn. He and his partner, Palak Shah, loved word games. During the first year of the pandemic, the couple would indulge themselves with the newspaper's popular word games, such as the spelling bee and the crossword puzzles from the New York Times. The frequent game plays inspired Josh to come up with his own game. In 2021, Josh created Wordle as a gift to Pollock. Yes, it was a product of love. The gameplay of Wordle is extremely simple. Every day, a five-letter English word is chosen and the players will have to guess it within six tries. After every guess, each letter is marked with a color. Gray means the letter is not in the word. Yellow means it is in the word but not in the right position. And finally, green means that the letter is correct and also in the correct position. One interesting feature about Wordle is that players can only play once per day and everyone is guessing the same word. Once the word is guessed, players will have to return the next day for a new word, just like how you'd play the daily word games on a newspaper. Over the summer in the UK, Josh shared the word game with his family. They loved it so much that the game would constantly derail the family group chats. There wasn't an option to share the emoji grids on social media back then, so they started another group chat to share their results and talk about the game. Josh then introduced Wordle to a few of his friends back in the States, and the game began to spread among friend groups. Around the same time, Wordle somehow caught the attention of the New York Times newsletter author. He included it as a footage around Thanksgiving, and the ball just kept rolling. Then Wordle got spread in both Australia and New Zealand. A Guardian journalist in Australia wrote about it in an article and the number of players skyrocketed. A player from New Zealand shared her results on Twitter with the emoji squares. Josh thought that was a good idea and integrated the emoji squares into the game, and that later became a game changer. If you've never played Wordle before, you probably had no idea what the emoji squares meant. Yet, you're seeing them everywhere. Over time, the squares would trigger an inkling of curiosity in you, making you die to find out the answer. At some point, you couldn't resist the urge to crack the code. What is Wordle? What do these green squares mean? Interestingly, the lack of explanation of the grids somehow became a guerrilla marketing tactic in itself. They caught people's attention and they made people curious. Josh thought adding the grid function would only make sharing the results easier, but he didn't intend it to be free marketing for the game. It's a happy accident. Tai Nguyen, a philosophy professor at the University of Utah and a scholar of games, expanded on Wordle's gameplay on Twitter. A good game requires a sense of agency, where the player needs to know that they have control over decisions and the outcome. If you played Wordle for the very first time, you would feel like you have no agency. It starts out like a random guessing game, asking you to give an answer with no information. But as the game progresses, you'd realize this is not the case. The colorized squares would give you some additional clues, and with every try, you could strategize your next move. This kind of agency expansion dynamic makes you feel like you have more control than you think. But the sense of agency isn't the only element that made Wordle viral. British psychologist Lee Chambers, who specializes in environmental and well-being coaching, theorized that Wordle was appealing because it stimulated both the language and logic processing areas of our brains. After solving the puzzle, the brain would release dopamine into the body. That's a hormone that allows us to feel pleasure and satisfaction. After we feel the pleasure, we keep craving more puzzles after our first try. It's addicting. Wordle wasn't the first game that has gone viral in tech history. Years before, we had Farmville and Candy Crush that dominated our social media feed in the early 2010s. We also had Animal Crossing at the beginning of the pandemic. But what set Wordle apart from other games was the greater sense of community. When everybody is solving the same word on Wordle, players feel like they're a part of something bigger than themselves. As soon as you post about the grid on social media, your followers or friends would instantly know what you're referring to. It generates a sense of belonging and a common experience. As Professor Nguyen put it, there's a lot of information and drama packed into that little graph. You can decipher and analyze your friend's strategy from the simple squares, yet the information is something that only Wordle players would know. The timing is perfect for Wordle as well. 
After two years of being apart from each other, this tiny word game somehow brings us back together again and reminds us of the need for connection we crave from one another. In the world of attention economy, Wordle only offering one word per day seems like a bad strategy. While apps like Facebook are trying to keep people on the platform as long as possible, Wordle players would leave the website immediately after solving the puzzle, and they wouldn't return until the next day. But it's also the scarcity that makes Wordle so special. This builds anticipation among players and makes them come back day after day. As of now, Josh has no plans at all to monetize Wordle or make this his full-time gig. And deep down, we also know that Wordle is a trend that will probably fade soon. But to Josh, Wordle has always been the secret love language between him and his partner. Josh said in an interview, If at the end of the day with Wordle, it's just her and me playing again, I think I'll be totally happy for that to be the outcome.